Hello friends, welcome to Coding Garden and welcome to this video where I will show you how to deploy an Express API to Vercel or Versal. I'm going to say either one of those. I actually don't know the correct pronunciation. I could have looked it up before recording this video, but I'm not going to. So Vercel is a place where you can deploy uh, serverless functions, also like Next.js apps and stuff like that. Uh, but you actually can also deploy Express APIs. So you might be wondering why on earth would you want to deploy an Express API to Vercel? Or why would you even want to build an Express API? This video is not going to talk about that. Basically, I'm making this video for people that have an Express API and they want to deploy it to Vercel. And there are some caveats for deploying a, an Express API to Vercel. It cannot be long-lived. That means you can't have any sort of like persistent or long-lived connections like WebSockets or server sent events. If you look at the Vercel documentation, uh, you'll see they talk about that. Like it's not, not built for that. And you should also just look at this entire page that talks about the limits of your serverless functions um, and make sure that you're potentially won't, won't hand any of those limits. Also, there's some documentation on using Express with Vercel. Uh, it's really funny because they kind of tell you like, hey, just don't do that. But again, I'm telling you, if you want to do that, this is how we're going to do it. Um, but they also have a section talking about drawbacks and edge cases. So definitely give this page a read to make sure that you're going to be able to, to deploy the app that you built to Vercel. But if you've made it past all of that and you still want to deploy an Express API to Vercel, let me show you how. First, let's make an Express API. So I'm going to use my Express API starter TypeScript, uh, which is a little scaffold for a project. I also have an Express API starter without TypeScript. You can pick and choose. But in your terminal, if you run this command and then you can give it a name, it'll create a directory, give you a basic Express app in that directory, and you can go from there. So uh, now if I go into that directory and if I do npm run dev, I will have myself a little Express API running on port 5000. It also comes built in with a nice little uh, endpoint API v1 emojis, and you get a list list of emojis. It also has the homepage. So this is what we're going to attempt to deploy to Vercel. So the first thing you'll need to do is create a folder in here called API. And then inside of that, create an index.ts if you're in TypeScript or JS if you're in JavaScript. And in this file, we need to import and also export our Express API. So you'll see in the setup here, app.ts defines an Express app and then exports it. Basically, you need to have your app set up in a similar way if you're not using the Express API starter. So here we'll import that app like this. So we've imported it and then now we export it. So now we've exported it, we should be good to go. So TypeScript will complain about this file if you haven't set up your TS config yet. So if you are using TypeScript, you're gonna need to tell it about the API folder. So in your TS config, be sure to include the, the API folder like this. So the next thing we'll need is a folder called public. So I'm just gonna create a public folder and then I'm going to create a .git keep file inside of here. Mainly this folder is just going to stay completely empty because my Express API doesn't have any static files. It's all it's all a JSON responses. .git keep is a git convention to keep an empty directory around, but we need that because Versal expects there to be a public directory. Next up, we need a Versal config. So we'll have a Versal.json file, and this is where we'll specify our rewrite. So every request that comes into our API needs to be redirected here. Right? Because if there's like a nested express route that's being requested, it starts here so that the app can handle it. So in our config, we're going to basically redirect everything to that one file. If you look at this article, which is linked down in the description using Express with Vercel, uh, they give you an example that you can copy paste this one here. We'll just take that, paste it in. And you'll notice that in their example, they're redirecting everything that's slash API to the API folder. In our case, we want to redirect everything because our entire Express app lives under there. So we're actually going to redirect slash anything to slash API. So now any request that comes into our app is going to get served by this serverless function, which is our entire Express app. So slash API v1 emojis, that is going to get handled by API, which in turn is handled by our Express app, which in turn mounted our API handler, et cetera. So these are the rewrites that we need. All right, so the last setting is to actually override the build command. So by default, if Vercel detects this build command, it's going to try and run it, but we don't need it to do that because uh, part of the deployment process is to look at the entry point here. Vercel handles all of the transpilation and everything else. You actually don't need to run the build command for a backend TypeScript app. So in this case, in order to override that build command, we need to add Vercel build. And this just needs to be a, a no op. So I'm just going to echo hello. So Vercel is going to run this command, but, but I don't need it to run the TypeScript comp compiler. So whenever we deploy, this is the command that's going to run because we actually don't need everything else. So that should be it. Once you have all of those settings, we should be able to deploy and create the project from the command line. So from the command line, if I do Vercel dash dash prod, I'll need to create a new project, choose my account, give it a name, and then just choose this directory. We can use all of the default settings. And this is that one setting I was specifically talking about. So because it sees that build command, it would try to run it on the server, but we don't want it to do that because we already have our entry point. So we're not going to modify these settings. 
And that's it, we're deployed. So if I try to visit this in my web browser, you can see at least the homepage loads, but it's important to check our nested route. So now if I try to go to API slash V1 slash emojis, it works. So our config is, is basically rewriting that request to the main app, which in turn serves up the emojis route. Thanks for watching this. If this was useful for you, definitely throw a comment down below letting me know. Like I said, there's like a very niche use case where you would actually want to do this. Uh, but if you do want to do this and you do it and it works, please let me know in the comments. Uh, definitely check out reactroots.com. I currently have a course that teaches the basics of React and TypeScript. So if you want to learn more, you can visit reactroots.com. Also, if you visit coding.garden, it has the rest of my links to all of my stuff. I'm live on Twitch right now. So if you visit twitch.tv slash codinggarden, you can watch live and participate and interact in the chat and stuff like that. Uh, but that's all I have for you. See you in the next one.